Welcome to the lecture video for Chapter 6 in Macroeconomics Econ 202. We will talk about the macroeconomic perspective. At times, such as when people are in need of government assistance, it is easy to tell how the economy is doing. This photograph in the upper left hand corner shows people lined up during the Great Dep Depression waiting for relief checks. At other times, when some are doing well and others are not, it is more difficult to figure out how the economy of a country is doing. This chart shows what macroeconomics is about. The box on the left indicates a consensus of what are the most important goals for the macroeconomy. The middle box lists the frameworks economists use to analyze macroeconomic changes, such as inflation or recession, and the box on the right indicates the two tools the federal government uses to influence the macro economy. Gross domestic product or GDP is a figure that measures the size of a nation's economy. There are three ways to come to this figure. One is by measuring the expenditures in an economy that is often called the demand method. The second is by measuring the income produced in an economy. And the third method is by measuring the total dollar value of everything produced. This is often called the supply method or production method. Each method should provide the GDP figure of a nation's economy for the same period. We will now look deeper into the component of the, the components of the demand side measurement. Consumption makes up over half of the demand side components of GDP as we can see in this graph. Consumption is about two thirds of GDP but it moves relatively little over time. Business invest investment hovers around 15% of GDP, but it increases and declines more than consumption. Government spending on goods and services is about 20% of GDP. Exports are added to the total demand for goods and services, while imports are subtracted from the total demand. If exports exceed imports, as in most of the 1960s and 70s, the U.S. economy is in a trade surplus. If imports exceed exports, as in recent years, then a trade deficit exists. Now let's look at the production or supply calculation of GDP. Services make up almost half of the production side components of GDP in the United States, as we can see here in this uh, <clears throat> graph. Services are the largest single component of total supply, representing over half of the G of GDP. Non-durable goods used uh, used to be the larger used to be larger than durable goods, but in recent years, non-durable goods have been dropping closer to durable goods, which is about 20% of GDP. Structures hover around 10% of GDP. Uh, the change in inventories, the final component of aggregate supply, is not shown here. It is typically less than 1% of GDP. There are three additional measurements that are useful when discussing macroeconomic issues. Uh, gross national product represents all of the products and services produced by a country and its citizens throughout the world, not just domestically. If depreciation related, uh, if depreciation related to capital goods is subtracted from gross national product, then we arrive at a figure called net national production. If indirect business taxes are then subtracted, uh, then we arrive at a figure called national income. Uh, this continues for a few more steps until we actually come to a figure that is more on the micro level, which is a disposable income or what the individual uh, citizen has as as income that it can spend and choose to spend or save. A nominal uh, value is one that is stated in today's actual prices. For example, the nominal value of a Big Mac is $3.99. The real value is price adjusted for inflation. It, inflation is the rate of increase in prices for goods and services over time. The real value of a Big Mac using 1980 uh, dollar values as the base year is about five dollars and ninety nine cents. In other words, if we were to buy a, a Big Mac today using nineteen eighty 
dollar values, then we would have to spend $5.99 just for the Big Mac. These terms are also applied or then applied to GDP, giving us nominal GDP, which is GDP stated in today's actual prices, and real GDP, which is a nominal GDP that is adjusted for inflation. Nominal GDP gives uh, values have risen exceptionally from 1960 through 2010, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis. With inflation or rising prices over time, the effects are have a deflation uh, are a deflation of the growth. So let me say that again: when inflation or rising prices happen over time, the effects on GDP is actually deflating. Right, so we're actually deflating the growth or the real growth tracked by the GDP measurement. Inflation and deflation make use of uh, indexes. So an index uh, takes a year, selects a year as the base year, and all of the other years represented are then compared to that base year. In the graphs used in this presentation and in the book, 2005 is the base year. For a more in-depth look in the calculations related to uh, this topic of GDP, uh, de the GDP deflator, uh, see the Khan Academy video for the GDP deflator. It's a really good one. Much like nominal GDP, the GDP deflator has risen exceptionally from 1960 through 2010, stemming from inflation that happens, right? So inflation of prices increases the GDP deflator. The red line measures US GDP in nominal dollars. The black line measures US GDP in real dollars, where all dollar values have been converted to $2,005. Since real GDP is expressed in $2,005, the two lines cross in 2005, right? Because they're going to be the same in that year. There is no difference between nominal and real because that's the base year. Conversely, real GDP will appear lower in the years. Uh, or before, well, the G, real GDP uh, with will appear higher in years before 2005 because uh, dollars were worth less previous to 2005. Conversely, real GDP will appear lower in the years after 2005 because dollars were worth more in 2005 than in later years, all stemming from inflation. Real GDP in the United States in 2012 was about 13 trillion. After adjusting to remove the effects of inflation, this represents a roughly 20-fold increase in the economy's production of goods and services since the start of the 20th century. So that's the real uh, increase over over the um, over the 20th century is a 20-time increase, right? 20-fold. Even though the economy cycles down in a recession and upward in an economic expansion, the overall trend in the U.S. economy is one of upward growth. Sustained times of recession, however, are called depression, and really there's only been one depression in the United States, which is, was back in the 1930s. Comparing the GDP of one country to another re requires the use of an exchange rate, since countries operate using different currencies. The term purchasing power parity is used to denote the comparing of countries' economic health over the long run. Using GDP per capita, which is total GDP divided by the number of citizens, okay, the number of people in a country, right? So that's the wealth of a, a country per citizen and other, so we use GDP per, ca per capita and other living standard measurements for countries. To, uh, to measure the country's wealth and well-being and to compare and analyze countries. Uh, you can also look at the, the exchange rate uh, calculations for a more in-depth look into that when you, if you go into the Khan Academy video for currency exchange.